celebrating our 11 year anniversary. And because it's a cause for celebration, we like to put in some extra special content for our readers. Our plan was not just to embark on another epic journey, but to do so on the best machines available on the planet. So we managed to get our hands on the brand new Triumph Tiger Explorer, the resurrected Honda CRF 1000L Africa Twin, and the all new Land Rover Discovery. And that's pretty much the dream team of adventure vehicles. We chalked out a route and planned the entire trip in detail because we only had five days to reach Lahal and Spiti. Shivank and myself left a day earlier on the bikes. We ventured out of Delhi early in the morning and made our way towards Narconda. Both the Africa Twin and the Tiger Explorer were very comfortable on the highway. The Tiger's triple engine was super smooth and the Africa Twin's DCT really impressed us. It took us less than four hours to get to the Himalayan Expressway and from there we started the climb up to Narconda. That same evening, Abhishek was running around Delhi picking up supplies. And after loading up the Discovery, late in the evening, he picked up Arup, Ravi and Rahul. And by 3 o'clock in the morning, the rest of our team was finally on their way to catch up with us. They drove through the night while Shivank and I got some much needed Shaddai. When we awoke the next morning, we found out that the team wouldn't make our planned rendezvous time of 9 o'clock. So we decided to move forward on the bikes towards Kalpa because we wanted to avoid riding at night. Fortunately for us, the roads from Rampur all the way to Rekong Pio have been improved tremendously and we encountered nothing but smooth tarmac. We reached Kalpa well ahead of schedule and while we waited for the rest of the team to arrive, we soaked in the magnificent views. The Discovery finally arrived well after dark and it took the guys about 17 hours of non-stop driving from Delhi to reach Kalpa. The next day, Arup and Ravi suited up to ride the bikes, while Shivank and I moved into the Discovery. Our plan was to head to Kaza, but we started late because there was no petrol available in Rekong Pio, and so we had to backtrack to Tapri. By noon, we filled up our tanks and continued on to Tabo, because again, we didn't want to ride at night. The scenery up to Nako was breathtaking, literally. As we stopped to shoot, Rahul and I had to control our movements because of the lack of oxygen. The road from Nako all the way to Tabo was the greatest stretch of road on the entire trip. They were brand new roads, smooth tarmac with plenty of turns and hairpin bends, along the most amazing mountain and valley scenery. It was beautiful. By now, we had gotten the hang of these big bikes and this quite sizable SUV, and we were blazing down the mountains into the valley and then along the river all the way to Tabo. The bikes were leaning into bends like sports bikes, while the Discovery was cornering like a machine half its size. Each of these machines feels a lot smaller and more chuckable on the move than you would imagine. It's a sign of great engineering in each case. We found a lovely little homestay, drank some local lemon tea, and got an early night's sleep again. The roads hadn't been challenging at all. In fact, the next day, we only had about 50 kilometers to Kaza, so we left Tabo at around 8 o'clock and reached in under 90 minutes. We finally made it to Kaza. Another destination checked off our bucket list. When we reached Kaza, we checked into a beautiful hotel outside town. We had some breakfast and then decided to head up to Comic, which is Asia's highest village with the road. I was in a bit of discomfort because of a minor case of altitude sickness, but felt much better as soon as I got behind the wheel of the Discovery. As we made our way up to Comic and left the tarmac behind, the Discovery showed its true colors. Even though it's completely luxurious inside the cabin, under the skin it packs a whole lot of muscle. The steering is light, the suspension is surprisingly supple, which means that it simply doesn't crash over any surface. And with the different driving modes on offer, you can easily tackle any terrain that comes your way. The car was fully loaded, four adult passengers, all our camera equipment, the luggage of six people, supplies, tools, and extra fuel. And still, it conquered anything and any terrain without breaking a sweat. The scenery was of course breathtaking once again, both literally and figuratively. It was very hard for us to get our photography done because at 15,000 feet, moving around becomes quite hard. The air was so thin 
and everyone began to feel lightheaded. It was a beautiful journey back down from Kalmyk, and the entire Lahal and Spiti Valley really left a lasting impression on us. I would even say that I prefer this part of the Himalayas over Ladakh. The only reason it hasn't picked up in terms of commercial tourism yet is because there's no airport here, and I really hope they never build one. From Kaza, we headed back via the Rothang Pass to Manali. We left Kaza early morning and made our way to Rothang. Up until Losar, the roads were decent, but soon after, they became what we had been expecting before we started our journey. The surface no longer resembled the road, as we made the climb to Kunzum Pass, which was one of the narrowest and scariest roads we encountered. We rode along the bedrock of a riverbed, and the path became extremely challenging. The Africa Twin can ride over anything effortlessly. Its smaller engine makes it very manageable, and the bike is purpose-built to take on extreme terrain. I was on the Tiger, and because I'm taller and bigger than most, I could manage it better. With the bike in off-road mode, it was fun and hugely capable, and I had a blast riding it. Both the bikes, with their soft suspension setting and traction control and ABS off, took on whatever came our way. It was truly effortless on these bikes. It does help if you're tall, obviously. The Discovery 2, though, with its air suspension raising the car to give it a ground clearance of 283 millimeters, was able to drive over anything, rocks and boulders included. It's a luxury SUV that takes adventure touring to another level. This was the most enjoyable part of the trip for all of us, as we were able to put these dream machines properly to the test. The adventure bikes are trailblazers, while the Discovery has a more reserved character but can still endure any hardcore adventure trip. And while you would imagine that the bikes allow you to immerse yourself in an experience completely, the Discovery, with its massive glass area, also allows you to truly become a part of the landscape, especially since it can pretty much travel to the top of any solitary mountain. After covering 180 kilometers at a slow pace, we were finally to the top of Rotan Pass. From here on, it was smooth sailing down to Nam. We celebrated the completion of our journey that evening and the next day in a long journey back to Delhi. It was certainly the trip of a lifetime, and to do it with these beautiful vehicles made it even more special. We're certainly a privileged lot to have completed such a wonderful adventure, and we can be very thankful in the knowledge that sometimes dreams do come true. As John Lennon once said, you may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. So keep daydreaming, because someday those dreams will force you to take the steps towards making them a reality.